Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new, thanks for stopping by. This channel focuses on home brewing that includes brew days, brewery builds, reviews, and more. This video is a follow-up video from a do-it-yourself glycol build that I posted earlier this year. Make sure to check it out somewhere around here if you're considering building your own glycol system. I received a few questions from the do-it-yourself glycol video that I plan on answering in this video that include how I built my control panel, how I converted the AC unit to cool the glycol, and the overall cost of the build. If you have additional questions, make sure to post them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you find this content useful. Before we get started with the control panel, the AC, and the cost of the build, let's talk about how this system performed this past year. I ran around 12 batches of beer through this glycol system and it really worked well. I ferment my beer in the garage, which sees extreme winters and extreme summers, and it was able to maintain temperatures with two fermenters, and I was also able to cold crash each of the beers that I brewed. I brewed a wide range of beers that include stouts, IPAs, pilsners, and more. I'm really impressed with how this system has performed. I do plan on moving my glycol system to the basement so it doesn't have to work as hard, but I feel confident if I left it in the garage, I would be able to maintain temperatures for my beers. So now let's jump into the control panel build. Here's all the major components before I put the control box together. There are three Inkbird ITC 1000s, six 20 amp switches, and six LED light indicators. The Inkbird ITC 1000s are the main components of this temperature controller and really can control everything if I wanted to simplify the build. I followed Inkbird's installation videos and wiring diagram for this build. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm an enthusiast when it comes to wiring, so build a do-it-yourself glycol system at your own risk. Be sure that you're knowledgeable about wiring electrical boxes, reference Inkbird's official instructions, and check with your local codes before attempting to build your own controller or modifying an AC unit. Here's a closer look at the control panel that's mounted on the front of my glycol cart. This is a large project box, and I also mounted a thick plate on the front that allowed me to drill and mount each one of these items on the front of the control panel. At the top, I have three ink birds that control the AC unit, the first fermenter and the second fermenter. Below the ink birds, I have six toggle switches that turn on or off each item of the control panel. These are not necessary. I added these for my own design features. The first toggle switch turns on and off the system. The second toggle switch turns on and off the AC unit. And the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth toggle switches turn on either the pump or the heating blanket on each of the fermenters. I also added six light indicators at the bottom of the panel. This just really makes it easy for me to see what's on at any given time during fermentation. On the rear of the project box, I have the main power cord going into the control panel. I have three input jacks for the temperature sensors. This makes it really easy for me to add the temperature sensors when in use. I have one 15 amp fuse. This project box only pulls 15 amps at any given time and six outlets. The first outlet controls the AC, and the second sets of outlets control either the pump or the heating element for each fermenter. So let's take a closer look inside the project box and I'll show you how I went about wiring this control panel. So inside the project box, I have the main power cord coming in through the rear of the project box. I have a hot lead going directly to a 15 amp fuse. Again, this project box will only pull 15 amps. I have the hot lead going to a hot bus. I have a neutral lead going to a neutral bus terminal. There's a neutral bus terminal on this side of the control panel and also this side. And I also have the ground wire going to a ground bus terminal. The ITC 1000 has a power input terminal here, which includes a hot lead and a neutral lead. I get my hot lead from the hot bus and I get the neutral lead from my neutral bus. I also have two inputs for my temperature sensor. 
the temperature sensors connected to the jacks I just showed you on the back of my control box. And I also have the hot lead, which there's a switch inside this Inkbird ITC1000. So when the temperature senses it's out of range, a switch connects the hot leads together, which sends power to a switch. In this case, this is my AC switch. If the AC switch is on, it continues to send power to the outlet switch for my AC. The outlet also is connected. There's a neutral wire from my neutral bus and I also have it grounded from the ground bus as well. So when this turns on, it sends power to the outlet for the AC unit and turns on the AC unit. In addition to the switch, I also have a light indicator wired. So when the, there's power being sent through this switch, the light indicator turns on. This works the same for each other element of the control box. So when the fermenter needs the pump turned on, the controller for the first fermenter sends power through the switch. The switch, if it's on, continues to send power to the outlet that controls the fermenter pump. And then the LED light turns on if there's power being sent through the switch. Again, this works the same for each one of the elements of this control box. For the AC, I made a couple of adjustments in order to control glycol temperatures using my new control panel. Every AC could be different, but the idea here is to set the AC to always be on. The Inkbird's temperature probe will now act as the AC's thermostat and turn on the AC unit based on the temperature of the glycol. I bypassed the original AC thermostat by hardwiring the AC to the on state I set the dial at the bottom of the AC control panel to a medium speed in order to push air over the AC's condenser coil. Here's how I placed the evaporator coil inside the cooler. Originally, the evaporator coil sat in the front of the AC unit, and there was a fan that I removed that blew air over the evaporator coil that creates the cold air. In this case, we're using the evaporator coil to cool down glycol in my cooler. I simply moved the evaporator coil over and into the cooler. I had to cut a small slit on the side of the cooler to accommodate the evaporator coil's hard line and three wires. Two wires are connected to two pumps that pump the cold glycol through the fermenters when they need to be cooled down. And there is a temperature sensor connected to the control panel. When the sensor senses the glycol is getting too warm, the control panel turns on the AC unit which cools down the glycol. Let's take a minute and talk about what it costs for me to build this do-it-yourself glycol system. I created a list and I'll run through it now for you. I spent $60 on three Inkbird controllers, $20 on a project box, $10 on wiring, $20 on switches, $40 on miscellaneous things like plugs, outlets, fuses, terminals, etc. $80 on two Anvil submersible pumps, $20 on a used air conditioner. Now this will greatly influence how much a build costs based on if you buy a used or a new air conditioner. I lucked out and found a great $20 used and working AC for my glycol chiller. And I spent $20 in my cooler. So a grand total, I believe that adds up to about $270. So for under $300, I built a glycol system that has served me well. Now, if we compare the price of my do-it-yourself glycol chiller to two commercial glycol chillers like an SS Brewtech or a Brewbuilt glycol chiller, those glycol chillers run between $600 and $1,200. I am sure they're awesome glycol chillers, and I might even buy one of those in the, in the future. But for me, I'm very happy with this system, and I plan on using it moving forward. That's a wrap on this video. I hope you found this information useful and it gave you enough information to decide whether or not you wanna build your own do-it-yourself glycol chiller. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.